Okay guys, welcome to today's video where we're going to be assembling the second version of the VS, uh, the VFD card holder. So, you know, it holds the business cards. Um, so this will be, I think this will be the third video in the whole series, but it's the second version of it. So this one has the 2007 to 2014 park reverse neutral screen on it instead of the 2003 to 2005 park reverse neutral screen. So we got a different screen on here, which means we have a little different board layout. So in this video, we're going to assemble it, we're going to program it. And since we spent a lot of time on assembly on the other versions of this, uh, I'll probably just do kind of like a fast forwarded video of assembly and go into some of the software this time, uh, just to do something a little different. So uh, yeah, let's, let's get into this. And we're going to talk about today's sponsor, uh, JLC PCB. So uh, let's get right into this video. Okay, so first let's talk about today's sponsor. Or JLC PCB. Now everybody knows that they do PCB manufacturing and they're the ones that made the circuit boards here. But did you know they also do 3D printing? Uh, but you can send, send in your files for your 3D prints and get them to 3D print everything for you too and just get it all done in one place so your project is just a complete project ready to go. So uh, definitely check out that service. I wasn't aware that they did it until uh, recently. So it's worth checking out and see if, hey, maybe maybe you don't need to buy a 3D printer or maybe you don't want to spend that time running your 3D printer and babysitting it. So you can just get it all done and shipped to you and ready to go. So uh, check, right, check so it before out. Before we get into the actual assembly, let's take a look at the schematic and see what we're looking at here. So uh, I made the footprint here for the VFD that'll be in the GitHub so that way you can download it and uh, do whatever project you want with it. So what we have this time is we don't have, you, you noticed last time we have like a driver IC up here. It was a serial latch driver uh, to, to drive it. Well, this one, it has a built-in driver. So all we have to do is just put the data into it and um, run with the microcontroller. And those are really the only two things you have to have to make this work. Uh, you're going to need two voltage sources. You're going to need your five volts for that uh, IC that's in there. And then you need your 12 volts uh, for the um, I believe it's the cathode or the anode. Uh, I'm not sure, um, but it, it you, you do have that 12 volt line there. The filament we're actually running it on the five volt line this time. Uh, I could have run it at 12 volts, but um, since I can work at five volts with it, I figured we'll do that. Less resistors. Um, <laughs> let let it eat. Easier setup, uh, in my opinion. It does put a little bit more load on the LDL. Uh, 117 uh, voltage regulator, but we're still well under the current um, capabilities of it, and uh, we, we're we still within tolerance on thermal. You, you'll notice it gets a little bit warm to touch, but, um, well, it, it, it gets hot to touch, but it's still significantly into its thermal characteristics there. We're, we're not we're not close to that 120 Celsius that's going to shut it down um, and, and start causing problems. So uh, definitely we're, we're within tolerance. So we're going to run it on five volts in, the, in this build. I uh, still have that same same fuse. It's pretty much the same design here. We're using the same crystal oscillator. But here's really the interesting one here, which is the um, um, SO, SOIC 8 byte uh, is what it's called. And uh, you, we'll take a better look at it there, but it's up here in the top corner of the circuit board. So what it's using is we're using an SOIC 8 clip uh, as our in-circuit programmer instead of buying one of those expensive JTAG clips and all of that. Um, and so it just bites down on the corner of the circuit board. Um, and I hate those SOIC 8 clips for using them on the packages. I always have problems with them. I'm just not a fan of them in the first place. So I figured, hey, this would be a good use for it. Uh, so we'll take a look at it and see how well that works. Um, and uh, we'll, we'll get this thing assembled. Okay, so uh, first thing you'll notice this time around, I went with the SMD version instead of the DIP package on the uh, Atmega 328. And that's just because I uh, actually have them on hand and I don't have any of the dip ones anymore. And guess what? They're not in stock anywhere right now, other than the scalpers, of course. You can buy them from scalpers on eBay uh, and from uh, certain companies down in China that are scalping them. But uh, other than that, you can't get them from any legitimate vendors at the moment. So I, uh, I went with some that I have on hand and these are the last six of them I have on hand. Uh, so that's uh, kind of where we're at with this right now. Uh, so yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and assemble this. Uh, it's going to be about the same same as last time, uh, but uh, this time I'm going to actually uh, just hand pump the solder paste on there instead of using the pneumatic system.
Okay, uh, the couple of solder bridges that I had on there just magically took care of themselves off camera. Let's get these, uh, some of these through hole components. Well, at least the stuff that has to be hand soldered on. Uh, I, I don't like putting that much heat on the buttons, so I just hand solder them. But uh, let's get this resistor here. Okay, so now let's put this screen on here. So uh, I actually ordered these. There was somebody on eBay that had them. Um, so got uh, got them from him instead of uh, doing it myself. Uh, when he first sent them, one of them had a crack in it and um, had a, uh, the oxygen indicator had gone off on it. So messaged him and he ended up, the one you just saw me take out of the box was the one that just arrived today. They, he sent me uh, two more of them, even though only one was damaged. So, yep, that was nice of them. That always speaks volume to a eBay seller is uh, if they actually take care of something when there's a problem. You'll notice there is a extra pad here that is not populated. That is so that way the other screen can be used. The, the one that has the M in it. Um, so that's, that's what that hole is for there. Um, it's just that way you can use the other one. So yeah, let's get this soldered on here. This is the point of that header that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. So I can use this SOIC 8 clip uh, with minimal modification. Sometimes you don't have to modify them, but mine didn't clip down hard enough, so I did have to file uh, in between the two there, uh, between the two clip parts there, so that way it can close a little bit tighter on it. Uh, but that's also what I had to do to mine. Um, and then, yep, just use the regular breakout board and I have it going to a Arduino Uno using it as an AVR ISP. You could use this, well, any of your tools you'd use for programming in at Mega 328. So uh, first thing we gotta do here is burn the bootloader onto the um, microcontroller here. Really all what you have to do is set the fuses uh, to, use this external clock and uh, that, that's really the main thing we're doing by burning the bootloader on here. You really don't have to burn the bootloader, you just have to set the fuses uh, and then you can upload it. But easy way to do that is to burn the bootloader, so that's what we're going to do. Um, and I actually already burned the bootloader on there, but I'll show you the process. I did it just to verify that I had the clip on there right. Uh, the clip is a little bit finicky on getting it lined up right, but once you get it lined up, it works really good uh, and it's a whole lot cheaper than any of the other um, kind of alternative tools to, to doing this. Uh, I do have something else I ordered to test out before I start recommending like using the SOIC 8 byte on all of your projects here. I have one other thing that was pretty inexpensive. I just ordered it. I'm going to test it out and then I'll do a video uh, specifically on the SOIC 8 byte and it and compare them and see what, what actually works best. But both of these options are a sub $20 option so that way you're not spending a ton of money on a programming jig. Uh, for your simple projects here. So yeah, let's go ahead and actually get into this, get this thing programmed and uh, verify that it works. So uh, I just have this wired up to the bench top power supply at 12 volts, uh, power that up and then plug in the Arduino here. Okay, so as you can see that it is already burned bootloader. So all that you do is hook up your ISP and click burn bootloader uh, and that will take care of that. Now we need to upload the program. So upload using programmer is what we're going to do here. There you go. It is working. So pretty simple to do. So as you can see that flicker that you were seeing again was just the angle of the camera looking at it and the refresh rate. So this time we actually have this program to do something with the button. So we have a couple of different modes that it does this time around. The screen works differently than the one that was in the 2000 and uh, three through 2005, uh, where you can actually control the individual ones too, and not just the bottom cursor there. All right, time to do some nerd stuff here. Okay, so uh, let's take a look at this Arduino code here. 
So it looks pretty similar to what we did last time with the 03 to 07, and that's because I just copied and pasted it and then adjusted it to work with what we have going on here. Uh, come down here and we define uh, our pin modes. And then uh, this one's kind of interesting here. This is actually setting the um, PWM on one of the pins. So we're gonna set pin three to output, uh, which is that refresh pin for the screen. So this thing required like a 200 Hertz um, refresh pulse. And so what I did is I just figured, hey, the easiest way to do that is to just set the pulse width modulation to 200 Hertz and just use that as a refresh. So that way we can just set that and leave it. So we just set the register and now we don't have to worry about it anymore throughout the code. So that's what we do here is we just uh, set the register. We do a compare in between it to do some math because the pulse width modulation by default is like 900 something Hertz or whatever. Uh, so yeah, we had to do some math to get it down to uh, 200 Hertz, but that's that right there. Um, so, we, we are talking directly to the registers in this, and that's why it's not all, you know, colorful like most Arduino code, is just because it's going directly to the register. Um, and yep, we just set a couple more variables after that. Uh, so then we have this void here, which is called void screen. This is actually doing the communication uh, with it. So I'm pretty sure it's just like a shift register that's inside there um, that we just uh, pulse it and pulse in the data after that. Just using that same bit read that we used in the uh, 2003 to 2005 uh, VFD. Um, so yep, yeah, using bit read, but this time I actually put them in as uh, bits instead of as um, hex. That way it's easier for everyone to follow what's going on there. So yep, yeah, we just continue on. We just have that, that for loop of it going through and writing the data. So that's that. We also have a pull button. And this time we actually programmed the button to do something other than just pause it. Um, so it pulls it and it sets the mode number, which is just a variable. So we set a variable from one to three. I mean, you could change what the maximum number is there um, and, um, and set it that way. So that way you can add more uh, things. And all we have after that is just, hey, here is the display the screen. Okay, so just to quickly explain the park reverse neutral part of it, so what we're displaying and how we're doing it, is so the uh, part, so the, the numbers and letters portion of it um, is reverse order on there for each byte. So we just want a one to turn it on to set that one to high and a zero to set it to low. So uh, th in this one, we're using that display and then we're sliding uh, one bit at a time over uh, on the, um, the underlines on there. So it's going on in mode one. So um, what you have to do is set all of these to one. So the these ones are all set to one to get all of the part reverse neutral drive three, two, one. And then this is the start of the underlines and the underlines are just, you know, that same number of bits. So we actually have two extra um, bits here at the end on here. So we will just go ahead and just ignore those, just set those two to zero. If you don't set them to zero, we'll get the wrong order and stuff will start to slowly shift into the wrong order. So uh, you can't skip those two. You do actually have to uh, push them in as a zero. We need that clock pulsed and then that low on each of those. Um, so yep, going through that, all of these are your park reverse neutral ones and they are in reverse order while the uh, underlines are in order. So like this one, you would have um, byte one would be the actual one here. And then this byte one right here is the underline at the park. So this in mode two, it sweeps the letters this direction while sweeping the uh, underlines this direction. So you get a kind of a reverse sweep there. Um, and then in this mode here, they sweep at the same time. So that way it's one at a time at the same time. So you get park and the underline, reverse and the underline, neutral and the underline uh, sequentially. So that, that'll help you understand what order they are in on there. All right. So, I mean, this is the completed project here. We, we got it mounted in the housing there, just the little three screws. Uh, this is again, the same exact housing as we used on the 03 to 05 one. Um, I, I actually 
kind of liked this uh, footprint here, that uh, SOIC byte, where we were able to use the SOIC clip to uh, do our in-circuit programming. Uh, instead of my usual, just make really big headers uh, to solder to, um, <laughs> the, the SOIC byte is a whole lot smaller, and it was still easy to do. Uh, so the files are going to be on the GitHub, so that way if you want to get these things produced and make them yourself, uh, they will be, it'll be available for that. I will have uh, six of these available for sale because I have six microcontrollers. Um, so that's, uh, that's what, I'll, what I'll have available on this. It's ju just six of them. But like I said, all the files are available for you to go make your own if you uh, have a source for them. And um, yeah, the, these screens, you can find them in the 2007 to 2014 uh, GM truck instrument clusters. If anybody knows of anything else that uses this exact same one, um, let me know down in the comment section. I hope you guys liked the video and I will see you guys in the next one.